Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Shark D Squall 3 helmet. Shark's D Squall 3 is a big improvement in my opinion on the D Squall 2 and I think it's got a good shout for being one of the best value helmets around at the moment. It's a sleek, sporty, practical lid with a good specification and if you go for plain colours then as we record this it's just £170. Right, let's get into the details and then I'll talk a little bit later about what it's like out on the road. This is the sister helmet for the Squall i3 from Shark. We covered that helmet recently and it's the one that comes with LEDs. White LEDs on the front of the helmet, red LEDs on the back, which flash when you hit your bike's brakes. If you strip out the lights and downgrade the liner a little bit, then you can knock 70 pounds off the price and you've got this, the D-School 3. The shell for this helmet is made from Lexan, which is a premium grade of polycarbonate. This material used to be the preserve of Nolan helmets, but now Shark and Nolan are owned by the same parent company, so Shark have taken it on for their plastic shells as well. Often, plastic shelled helmets end up on the heavy side, but this medium sized D School 3 weighs in on our scales at 1589 grams, which is very respectable. The shell has vents at the chin and the top. They're both operated by small switches, neither of which is the easiest to locate, and the airflow isn't something you feel immediately when they open the vents. It's often the case with plastic helmets that the venting is lacking, and that is the most disappointing aspect of the D School 3's performance, in my opinion. Right, with that out of the way, let's move on to the many positives there are to mention about this lid. The visor has an all new mechanism and it is miles better to remove and refit the visor on this helmet than on the previous incarnations of D-Squall and Squall. It's got five steps from fully open until the bottom lip rests against the seal. You can leave it there for a small gap to let some air flow in and I found that was a pretty good gap while I was riding in this helmet. To lock it, you then give it a firm press on the tab and now it will resist coming open in wind pressure. There's no need to push a button to unlock it. You just get your thumb or forefinger under this tab, just push it with a bit of force and up the visor pops. It's protected against mist by a Pinlock 70 insert. That's the middle of three grades available. And another upgrade that seems to have come about from Shark's new friendship with Nolan is that the Pinlock pins are much easier to adjust if you need to alter the tension to get your insert seated correctly. Now you just put a coin in the groove on the outside tab then rotate it until the eccentric posts are where you want them to be. There's a sun visor behind the main visor that comes down as far as the breath guard. I found that gave excellent glare protection in my time with this lid. It also has an anti-fog coating. That's something else that Shark have inherited from being in the same group as Nolan, and it's a significant upgrade for someone like me because I struggle with visor misting. Right, let's move to the inside. The lining isn't as premium in feel as the one in the more expensive Squall i3, but it is still a decent lining. There's a comfortable brushed fabric covering the cheek pads, which makes things smoother when you're putting the lid on and you're taking it off. There's no foam at the tops of those cheek pads, but that's a good thing because it makes sure there's plenty of room for spectacle arms to slide inside the lid. The covering fabric on the skull pad is nothing fancy, but it is better than many helmets you'll find at this price. The interior also gives you a bit of customization potential as well. If you take out the skull pad, you'll see a foam bar at the back that's held in place by two elasticated loops. It sits just by the nape of the neck here. If you find the helmet uncomfortable in this area at all, if you whip that out, that bar, then that will just give you a little bit more room inside the helmet. Another thing to mention, the synthetic leather trim around the base of the lid is also a classy touch that you don't really routinely get in helmets of this price. And also the lining is refreshingly simple in the way it secures into the helmet. Some helmets have systems that are too clever for their own good in my opinion, but this liner just secures in with simple press studs. The chin strap, that fastens with a micrometric buckle, and there's also a chin curtain, which can be removed if you want a little bit more air to flow into the lid. If you do that, it will probably come at the cost of some extra wind noise though. Behind the liner as well, there were recesses for intercom speakers. The d School 3 is prepared for an official Nolan NCOM intercom system. That's going to be coded the B902SK when it becomes available, but I think most people will want to fit an off-the-shelf comm system to this helmet. It should be okay, should be quite simple, but I think you'll need to use the self-adhesive plate rather than the clip that goes between the shell and the liner. There's also a contour on the shell, this one here, and that means the unit will probably have to sit further forward or further back than is ideal. 
I'd say a small unit would be better suited to this lid than a big chunky one and something like an Interphone Ucom 3 would be my personal pick. Okay, let's cover off sizing, approvals and prices. The D-Score 3 comes in sizes from extra small up to double XL. There are two shell sizes. Helmets up to and including medium go in the smaller shell and everything above that, so large and above, goes in the bigger shell. It's approved to the latest standard for the road, ECE 2206, and it's also ACU Gold rated, so it can be used on UK circuits for racing and track days. There's no rating under the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme yet. If one pops up, then we'll add it to the description for this video. As for pricing, as we record this, plain colours for this helmet are £169.99, and graphics like this one are £209.99. Right then, overall, I think the upgrades to the d 3 have made this a thoroughly decent helmet. It's a shame the ventilation isn't better, but helmets in this price bracket are often lacking when it comes to venting, so it's kind of something you have to put up with unless you are able to make the move up into the higher price brackets. The rest of it about this helmet is all positive. If you're looking for a sportyish helmet for around £200, then I think it's well worth sticking one of these on your head to see if it suits you. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shark D School 3 helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.